Good morning, guys. Today marks one week from Andrew and I's ADCC trials run in Las Vegas. And I just wanted to give you guys a nice update video, give you, share my thoughts and kind of explain where I'm at, where Andrew and I are at, and what we'll be doing in the near future. Um, so the, the camp went great. I, I know you guys saw a few videos leading up to it on, on Flow Grappling and the ADCC page and, and my YouTube page. But um, overall, the camp went great. I did get injured about halfway through the camp, um, but I was able to heal up by the time the match occurred, or the matches occurred, so you can't really hope for anything better than that, right? Um, yeah, so injuries just happened. We were doing some uh, sprints, and uh, some sprints, some hill sprints actually, and um, my hamstring felt really, really tight during one of the hill sprints, and um, after the exercise, was you know trying to stretch it out and do whatever I could to to loosen it up but over the course of the next few days I felt it start to get t like really tight and then one day in training when I was on someone's back I felt it pull so I had pulled my hamstring it was pretty solid injury like I had to take you know I think it was like two weeks off training before I was able to get back to live rounds again um, was mostly because I didn't want to make it worse and then have to compete with like a completely tore or completely pulled hamstring so I was just trying to really make sure that I was healthy before I got back on the mat probably could have got back on the mat a little bit sooner but I wanted to make sure that was nice and healthy Andrew kind of had a similar story he um, got injured about halfway through the camp as well he deals with um, shoulder injuries as, as well as myself um, mostly just one of my shoulders but Andrew does get shoulder injuries and he was doing some exercises, maybe a little bit too heavy and uh, some ro rotator cuff exercises. He was doing a little bit too heavy, um, got a lot of tightness in the rear part of his shoulder and then in training led to an injury, kind of similar to my story with the whole getting uh, a little too tight and then injured during training. Um, typically a lot of androgenized injuries come from the lack of tightness. So we actually have like hypermobility. So a lot of times, we get hurt because we're too loose, too flexible, and there's not enough stability in particularly our joints and our, our backs. Andrew, you guys know he hurt his back against PJ Barch. Um, we both have had very similar injuries since we were like, what, 13 years old, I think, it was the first time I really injured my back to the point where I couldn't walk. And um, I've had those pretty regularly. Not as much anymore now that I have care from some of the best guys in the, the game. Dr. Bob from Spinal Rehab has helped me out a lot understanding my back injury and also just kind of navigating through the injuries. And then, uh, you know, same goes for Andrew. So uh, dealing with getting stronger and helping support those joints has really helped us over the years. But after we kind of worked through those injuries and got to the end of the camp, we were both feeling great. We didn't have massive weight cuts. Um, Andrew actually didn't cut as much weight as I thought he was going to. So I assumed that he would cut about similar to what I cut whenever I did 77 kilograms, but he was walking around like a tad bit lighter than when I walked around. I walked around closer to like, I wasn't quite 185, but I was definitely close to that. Whereas Andrew was walking around high 70s. So he didn't have a major cut and then neither did I for the 88 kilo. I was walking around right below 200 pounds. Um, and then in the middle of the camp, or I guess maybe in the beginning of the camp, I was a little bit heavier. I was probably about 202. 203 but then you know during the camp doing all the extra conditioning and of that sort I was actually about 198 197 in the mornings um, not a big cut 88 kilos is about 193 pounds right around there and then Andrew's cutoff was like 168 and we both got a half kilo allowance so that put us at 194 and right under 170 so it wasn't a big cut for either one of us we both felt great with the cut. The camp was outstanding. And then the matches. So we both had two matches on day one. We would have had more, but since we were in the top um, seeds, some of, the, some of the top seeds in the division, we were able to get a bye the first round. So that forced us into that second round already, which I think is what round of 132 or something, something like that. I can't remember how the, how the brackets break down, but we had, um, only two matches on day one, which we actually both finished both of our matches with rear naked chokes. So my first match, uh, I got a nice slam, got a little bit of leg entanglements, got to the back, got that finish. Um, Andrew had a similar story where, where the guy had pulled guard, he had passed guard, worked the back, and then got the finish. Um, 
second match of the day i was able to get the takedown again get the top side control off of like a body lock style pass and get to the back and get that finish andrew's second match of the day he encountered a better guard player and was able to kind of dissect the guy's guard after you know doing what andrew does best change directions and be very quick and light on his feet pass the guy's guard get the guy's back and get that finish again so we had fueled up later that day got some good food in us i actually brought a little like cooktop to my hotel room i brought it on the airplane that way i could cook my own food in the hotel room that way i was meeting the right type of macros and stuff that i'm used to eating uh, i didn't have to spend all that money in vegas to get a 20 ounce steak <laughs> i could just cook it in my hotel room after making a stop at the whole food market um andrew had some good food as well we both felt great leading into day two andrew's shoulder was flaring up a little bit more so that shoulder injury that he had kind of came back to haunt him a little bit after day one but he knew that if he just got a really good warm-up in use the rubber bands and let the adrenaline kick in that he'd be fine now as far as day two goes um i need to kind of dial this in a little bit better day one wasn't as big of a deal because i wasn't as nervous and um, didn't have as many matches so i didn't really need to have as high energy levels i guess but for day two day two was tough for me because i was super nauseous couldn't get any food in me for breakfast i could barely drink any water without feeling like i was gonna vomit i actually had um uh, drank some water in the morning with some electrolytes and actually felt myself kind of burping that up almost all day even though it was just water with electrolytes stuff that i'm used to drinking uh, same brand, same everything, Ath Organics. Check them out, they're great. But just the nerves, I guess, the dealing with, you know, the, the match, the amount of matches that I was gonna have that day. And um, just, you know, the anticipation and everything. I always get a little bit nauseous before the matches and I typically compete on like a fasted stomach. Um, it's kind of a funny saying, but my coach would always say that a hungry lion uh, fights or hunts better than one that's full, which like, I don't know if directly translates to performance but for me i've always found that like fighting on an empty stomach i don't feel nauseous I feel a lot quicker i don't feel as lethargic but in this scenario where i had uh, what five matches on day two going into it on an empty stomach and try, like not eating all day after building up all of that adrenaline in the matches and building up all that anticipation and warming up and getting sweat and then hitting that adrenaline in the match getting that adrenaline dump sweating and then calming back down and then getting ramped back up to coach, like all my adrenaline boiling again, and then having to calm back down, and then now having to do that all over again for the second match, third match, fourth match, fifth match, was pretty tiring. And I felt like at times even a little bit dizzy. So I was like thinking that I just needed some food. So I would like snack on a protein bar, um, but it, I just need to dial that in a little bit better because throughout that whole day, all I had was one pack of electrolytes, maybe, two bottles of water and uh, less than one protein bar. So I definitely need to dial that in. That way I'm not um, running low on like my gas tank. Um, I felt good in my matches. It was just in between my matches. I had like really low energy levels and um, I'm, I'm a big believer in uh, having pre-workout snacks and being fueled for your exercises and competition i feel like is no different and even maybe more so important so i just need to dial that in and figure that out before dcc worlds but then as far as our next matches we were able to kind of crush it day two go out there i didn't get a great warm-up my first match and i encountered uh i think his name was anthony but on instagram it's shaggy jitsu he's a really good competitor really stout he's probably only about this tall compared to me which i'm not like super tall for the bracket um and then he was definitely pretty stout big shoulders big neck um and it was really hard for me to get submission going i was able to get to his back get behind him um blocking that body triangle but unable to get that submission and definitely felt a little bit fatigued after that match from holding him there the whole time um uh, yeah i just needed to get a better warm-up on that so always good to kind of get checked and uh learn you know and then for andrew andrew did great his first match he had uh dory from checkmat he's actually had a match with him at the purple belt absolute finals in the nogi worlds and they had a great match back then very back and forth so we knew they would have a tough match this go around as well and it was it was a good match andrew got the takedown andrew got half guard swept and then dory ended up close to andrew's back and then andrew was able to escape get on dory's back 
score, and then almost get to finish before the time ring. But it was, it was an epic match. And then the second match of the day for me, I was up against this really, really jacked guy. Um, I'm forgetting the guy's name now, but he actually had beat Steven Martinez day one. So he had beat one of the better guys in the bracket, or at least one of the better guys in my eyes. Uh, definitely the best guard passer in that bracket, in my opinion. Steven Martinez is a savage. And I'm not just saying that because he's on Team Checkmat. I'm saying that because when I've trained with him, he's just mopped the floor with me. <laughs> so um, yeah, he's really good. And, and this guy had beat Steven first round. And so I knew the guy would be tough. Um, but he was mostly physical, so I knew he wasn't very technical and didn't have like the level of wrestling I had. So I knew that I could get him down as long as I just was smart about my movements and tried to stay sharp. So I was able to get the single leg, the snatch single leg. He was palming my head and reaching pretty hard, which was kind of disturbing. Like it was frustrating me and kind of disturbing my, my posture. But it was kind of the wrong move for him because he was reaching and he wasn't in a place where he could go for like a down block and stop me from shooting in. So I was able to get that snatch single, get him down to the ground after putting some pressure on him on top. He made a mistake by pushing me down his body while I was in like a body lock over under style position. And I locked on that dog bar and got that half guard, top half guard and knee bar. Uh, it, was a, it was a good match and it was a good way to get like a unique submission like that. I'm always a fan of hitting fun, unique submissions. Um, I mean, you guys have seen a lot of my massive matches where I've hit like calf slicers, a calf slice Dante Leon with that, that front calf slicer. Um, I've done like that front naked choke on Bradley Hill in, in the UK. Um, and then my finals match at ADCC, if you guys saw that, that was a pretty unique submission as well. So that's something I really like to do. I like to hit unique subs. I feel like people don't really necessarily expect them as much and uh, just kind of like more entertainment for the audience. You're not doing the same thing every time. So for me, I really enjoy that. And then now for Andrew, his second match, of day two he had Kyle Chambers so Kyle Chambers is a tough match for him because Kyle has a win over him so I think there is a little bit of like a mental mental block there for Andrew that he has to jump over which he did tremendously he did amazing he actually ended up jumping over it by jumping over Kyle's guard into an armbar and um, he didn't finish that one but later in the match got another armbar after passing the guard and got the finish on the armbar which was really great for him he looked outstanding and then as far as our third match of the day, I had a guy that I fought first round of day two in the East Coast Trials. I fought Cameron. I don't want to say his last name because I can't spell it or I can't uh, pronounce it correctly. Um, it's like Falorachak or something like this, it's, but he's a very, very, very tough competitor, very strong. He trains out a new wave, so he's got really good instruction from John Danaher himself. Um, but also probably one of the bigger guys in the division. And I expected to fight Hunter Colvin this this round this third round of the day but he had beat hunter colvin in the match previously so that just is a testament to how tough this guy is last time i wasn't able to submit him i was able to only beat him on like a guard pass or two um so i was able to get him down early in the east coast trials and pass his guard but this time when we went out he was coming out a lot harder with really heavy collar ties that were even feeling like they were kind of rocking me a little bit when he would hit that collar tie on my head i always felt like he was punching me. I was like, man, this guy's strong today. <laughs> so I just kind of was exchanging hand fight with him, went for an underhook. He kind of like limp armed out of the underhook, which is a little unorthodox. And typically I would just like run a knee tap off of it. But it was so early in the match that I just kind of like let him do it because you know, big, strong guy, not really trying to like explode on the big, strong guy in the first 10 seconds, you know. And then he um, actually limp armed out and then got his own underhook and started running to my back. So I was able to use that wizard reach underneath and get his bottom leg roll through, put him inside saddle and get that uh, straight knee bar finish. So I was able to get another finish on day two, day two for my third match. And then Andrew went up against Andy Varela for this match. So this match was insane. Andrew is just an absolute savage going out there and dogging which is like a really hard thing to do against Andy Varela like Andy Varela is one of those guys that goes out there and just like competes hard and um you know Andrew went out there and and was able to hit some feints take him down get to top position hold him in top position and then get another takedown later in the match to win by points and uh, it was just really really good on Andrew's part Andrew looked amazing I was really happy for him and um now I have one more match. I had another match with 
Elder Cruz. So my match with Elder Cruz was a rematch because I lost Elder Cruz at the East Coast Trials. Um, Elder Cruz beat me on a guard pass. I had done maybe a, the wrong type of strategy in my opinion. You know, I, I think I should have probably just wrestled him the whole time at East Coast rather than once I got put on my back after a scramble, I just, just decided to use my guard and try to chase him down and leg lock him because he has been leg locked in the past and I'm confident with my leg lock attack. So I was just gonna try to leg lock him, but that led to me getting my guard passed and losing 3-0. Um, these matches, if someone scores on you early or even late, it's almost impossible to get that score back because they're only six minute matches and it's so hard to score in ADCC. So I ended up losing that and I was really excited to get back out there and have another match against him. Um, this was a takedown war. I decided to go for takedowns this match. Um, I think in my past, what, my past two ADCC trials, the East Coast and this West Coast, I had a total of 14 matches and I didn't pull guard in one of the matches. So I've been really trying to work my takedowns. And um, in this match particularly, I was really going for that, for those takedowns, really going, trying to wrestle them down and was able to, after what was it, probably five minutes of some exchanges, we were really going back and forth, having some good exchanges. And I was able to counter his front headlock by uh, getting my underhook and running him down with a knee tap. He went for a lat drop. I, um, I guess, my my friend pat from uh, heroes jiu-jitsu actually called it dropping the anchor so um throwing your leg back and actually kind of hooking them after they kind of throw you off the top of them kind of drops the anchor to keep me from flying over the top of them so that helped me maintain top position so he kind of failed on that sacrifice throw and then as he was trying to build himself back up i was able to get the underhook and kind of turn him over similar to like a cow catch and i was turning him over with that underhook and then he just dropped down real low to the mat in a turtle position so I was able to use a front headlock to run to his back and then get my hooks in and get that finish. Actually, I didn't get the, the renegade choke, get that the, the points to lead to the end of the match. Um, he's a really tough guy to beat, really tough guy to score on, really tough guy to submit. So I was really happy to get that, that match back. Um, it's always good to get revenge, but I have a lot of respect for Elder. Elder's a great guy. Uh, we've trained together before, we're friends. He's a good dude. But um, on the mats, it's all business, you know? Like, you know, we can always, be the best friends off the mat but when it gets on the mat like we're we're there doing business it's job it's our job so going out there and uh putting all that aside and it was really good to get that back um but then now andrew and i are both in the finals so we're in the finals and um andrew's got oliver taza in the final and i have uh jay rodriguez so that's another rematch for me but I don't like to necessarily count that first match that we had. We had a match at East Coast Trials for third place, which I don't typically like to count because he went into the match injured and I attacked his foot, which was his foot that was injured and he tapped pretty early. Um, not saying that I wouldn't have got it if he wasn't injured because I'm still confident in my attacks and I think I probably could have, but I think he probably would have put up a lot more of a fight and potentially escaped and got to a good position or something and maybe we would have had a tougher match. So I don't like to count the first one just for that reason, but we're going into this match and I know that I at least have a little of a mental advantage over him because I do have that win. Even if it doesn't count 100%, it is a little bit of an advantage. So going into that match, I was pretty confident. And then Andrew's match with Oliver, I think we're pretty confident going into that match as well because Andrew his wrestling's outstanding his leg locks are really really tough to kind of navigate and get to finishes on him he's super squirmy and he's got good leg lock defense and then his ability to scramble is better than I like anyone in the world so I knew that if he was able to just keep it standing and then keep defending the leg locks and then keep it in those scrambles he was going to dominate and it was a really good match Andrew was able to get that takedown early on um, helped ac actually let Oliver Taz back up and then they just kind of kept going for takedowns back and forth. They got a few really good scrambles where Oliver took Andrew down and Andrew got back up before there was points. And then there was one exchange where Andrew took Oliver down and then in order for Oliver, actually it was a counter. So Oliver had shot in and taken Andrew down and then Andrew had cartwheeled out of it to the top position. And then that had resulted in a score if Oliver didn't move. So Oliver was forced to give his back and Andrew took his back, got his hooks in, which was also a really good exchange because if you guys would have noticed Andrew's hip flexibility there, Oliver was completely shelled up knee to chest and Andrew just threw his leg all the way up and over and still got his hook in. That 
hip flexibility. I'm a big believer in stretching. Both Andrew and I are really flexible. Like I said, we are, we're almost too flexible. That's why we get hurt. But I am a big believer in hip flexibility. I think hip flexibility prevents injury and also helps you be able to lock in body triangles, throw in your hooks, lock in regular triangles, just and play guard really effectively. So that was a really good utilization of that hip flexibility on Andrew. And then he rode out the match there on the back, was able to get that finish. And I had my match with J-Rod. So my match with J-Rod, I knew to wrestle him down. I knew not to let him on top of me. That's one of his better positions. Even though that like the, the, the Rodriguez brothers are known for their wrestling, I feel like their guard passing is better than their wrestling. So I knew to try to wrestle with him and prevent him from getting the top position. And then for some reason, if I did find myself in bottom position, it was to play guards that I didn't think that he would have as much experience dealing with. Um, he's, he trains it at B team. So he's probably really good at like that, that DDS style guard or at least defending it, I mean, like passing that DDS style guard because all those B team guys, they came from Dan or her. So a lot of them play like that sit up guard. A lot of them play single leg X. So I knew to kind of like stay away from those style positions. So I, I was able to wrestle him down. I got to his back and then he shook me off. So he landed in top position. I was able to get back to my guard and then use my guard to find a leg entanglement that led to X guard. And the X guard that I played was where I was behind him. So I had his leg crossed over to the far side, which is great for me. And I figured he didn't have as much experience dealing with. So I was able to use that to wrestle up, get to his back. And then I was able to get a mat return, take him down off of his Granby roll, and then secure my body lock pass, get to top position. And then after I was in top position for a little bit, um, I knew to kind of settle there, really kind of wear on him. He started to explode and I put him in that reverse close guard, which led to the A block. So I was able to hit that unique submission in the finals against J-Rod. Um, He's a really good competitor and again i have a lot of respect for him all the competitors i faced this weekend i have a lot of respect for or this past weekend they're all outstanding people and outstanding grapplers and it was really good to get out there and get those those finishes uh, i got five out of seven matches finished by submission andrew had four out of seven matches finished by submission which are both really high submission rates especially in at this level right at this level it's really tough to win matches but it's even tougher to win by submission so it was good for us to get out there and show that we are always looking to attack that submission and um, we're also there with the best guys in the world and we're ready to crush this ADCC camp and go out there and then hopefully replicate the same performances or even uh, one-up our performances at the trials at the ADCC Worlds in the Team Mobile Arena. So for this camp we're just gonna be pushing each other um, hopefully going into the competition uninjured so this time we were able to go into it uninjured, un, uninjured, but we did encounter some injuries during the training camp. So hopefully this time we can go in there and have a solid training camp with no injuries and then work into the ADCC Worlds. Again, no injuries and then perform to our very best. Uh, it's going to be a great, great event. I'm really looking forward to competing in front of, uh, I forget how many people, I think 20,000 people. So I'm assuming that they will sell out. So it's going to be epic being in that arena. I had an uh, opportunity to compete in the um, Thomas Mack Arena last time. And I didn't do that well, I, I lost first round. So for me, this will be a good test for me to try to get that redemption and to go back out there and do better than I did last time. And also just use that experience that I gained from the last time to really replicate a solid performance. Um, I'm really excited to get out there. And Andrew, Andrew does really well underneath immense amounts of pressure and he does really well in front of big crowds. So I think he's gonna do outstanding. And um, he's one of the, I mean, he's one of, if not the best in that division already. So after this camp, like I can imagine he's going to be even another level. Same goes for me. I feel like I can beat a lot of these guys in that bracket. Um, I have beaten a lot of them already. Uh, I had some matches before the trials against a lot of the trials winners and people that had invites and I've been able to win all of them so far. Um, so right now I'm just trying to chip away at like learning new things that are going to help make my game more, more well-rounded and make my game more effective against everyone in the division. So I'm really looking forward to getting out there and testing my, my skill set, my wrestling, my leg locks and my guard passing and my submission game against these best guys in the world in front of all these people. So it's going to be an epic, epic weekend. So make sure to buy your tickets for ADCC Worlds. And thank you guys for tuning into the video. If you have any questions or just want to comment anything down below, I'll get back to you guys in the comment section. Thanks for all the support and I'll see you guys in the next one.